Hi there my friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing a watercolour travel brush set by Fumi. I think that's how you pronounce their name. Um, they sent me this set, well first of all they contacted me a few months ago and asked me if I'd like to test out and review a set of their travel brushes. So they gave me a link to their website. Um, there was only one set and that's it this is it that's vegan all the others contained animal hair but this is completely synthetic it's a synthetic sable so I agreed to review this set and they sent it to me and I've just got around to reviewing it now so um, yeah I love them to be quite honest as you can see once you've washed the glue off the ends the tips are very springy and they do hold a lot of pigment and water which is lovely so they, this little set comes in a 12, an 8 and a 4. They're the sizes and yes, they are vegan. So you just unscrew the brush barrel from the bottom. Pop the bottom back on. Uh, I, they did go a bit loose while I was using them, but that was my fault. I hadn't screwed them on tight enough. So as I was taking a look at them and trying to decide what I was going to do with them, I decided I'd do a spontaneous watercolour. Now for those of you that haven't heard of it before, it's just where you, you can either add water to the paper first or later and you just apply lots of watercolour and let it do its own thing on the paper. Then as the watercolour flows into each other, um, you let your imagination run wild and <laughs> see if there's anything in there that you can tease out. So, yeah, I'll take you through the process. So I'm just wetting that third brush now, the number four. And really, I just swill it about in a jar of fresh water. It's a uh, deionized water. And yeah, the brushes are brilliant. They kept a lovely tip all the way through. So this paper, oh dear, <laughs> it's Daler and Rowney, the Langton cold pressed, 140 pounds and it's 14 inches by 10 inches. Now this block of paper is over 20 years old, well it's probably more like 30 years old and the sizing is breaking down on it but I don't want to waste it, there's always, um, there's always room for paper in my studio and this paper even though the sizing was breaking down it served its purpose very well now as you can see i just sprayed on a bit of water again deionized water and i'm using the largest brush at the moment the number 12 and i'm just randomly putting colors in i don't know what i'm doing i don't know where i'm heading i've got no plans you just let the watercolor do its own thing so the colours that I decided to use and the paint that I decided to use for this was the Core watercolour and I'm just using three colours all the way through the painting, just three colours and that's Ultramarine Blue, Pyrrole Red Light and Nickel Azo Yellow. Just those three colours and then just letting them play on the paper. It's a fascinating way and it's very relaxing actually just to let the watercolour do its own thing. I didn't know if I was going to have to do um, another painting, if this was going to work, no idea. That's the joy of watercolours when you're working like this. If you want to see somebody who's really good uh, and very experienced at spontaneous watercolours, then I do recommend um, Mind of Watercolour here on YouTube. The gentleman that uh, runs that channel he does a lot of these and yeah that's it's fun so it's something you do uh, you could do this with children it's uh, very enjoyable even if you just get an abstract painting at the end of it it doesn't have to be realistic just having fun just playing with the paints <coughs> excuse me so i've got a small misting bottle uh, by derwent and in there I've just put deionized water as well. Now the reason for working with deionized water is it's a sterile water. You know there's no bacteria or anything in it and there's no nasty chemicals, uh, no chlorine or anything like that in it. And so the longevity of your painting 
is uh, guaranteed if you're using acid-free paper, acid-free masking tape, quality paints um, and deionized water. So as you can see, I'm just messing about. Still no idea what I'm doing really, just having a play. Letting the water flow um, into these droplets of water that are already on the paper. It's just so much fun. I did do a little colour wheel with these three colours just to make sure they were going to make um, some nice greens and neutrals. If uh, anybody wants me to do uh, colour wheels with different uh, colours just let me know in the comments below and I can make a video out of that. It's just a nice way of testing your colours before applying them to paper but in this case I did want to use a, a limited palette I didn't really want to be messing around with any more than three colours because I've got enough on the go on my uh, table at the moment as it as it is so just letting the water run down to the bottom of the page and taking the excess off with a tissue I'm working at about, I don't know, about 10 degrees. So it is tilted towards me slightly. That's why everything's running down. Yeah, obviously, if you wanted to work flat, that's fine. It still has the same effect. These core watercolours do travel very, very quickly. Uh, that's one element. It's got something to do with um, the binding material in the paint, I think. Uh, it just doesn't uh, enable to... the I'll start again. It does enable the core watercolours to travel very quickly. Other colours might uh, take a little longer to travel and if they're taking a little bit longer then just tip the paper a little bit more to get them to travel. Uh, make sure you've got enough pigment on your brush. Um, one thing that can be a bit troublesome is there can be a tendency to get too much water onto your paper when you're doing spontaneous watercolors like this and in which case if there's too much water all the pigments will just mix together and neutralize then and you'll just end up with grays and flat colors really so keeping the colors separate to a certain extent but still allowing them to mix these brushes were just perfect. I've got nothing. I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm not getting paid for this review. I was sent uh, the brushes for free, obviously. Uh, they invited me to review a set and I chose this vegan set. So yeah, they're synthetic sable. I'll put a link to the Fumi. I don't know how you pronounce it actually. I think it's Fumi. I'm not sure. I'll put a link to their website anyway in the description below. So I do have another uh, travel brush set that I'm going to be reviewing later. I won't do it straight after this one. Nobody wants to see two brush reviews <laughs> straight after each other. But oh, it was just this was just so much fun. And the painting was completed in about two and a half, three hours. Obviously, you've got to give it time to dry. And I speed, sped up the drying time by using a hairdryer. Now, obviously, when you've got a lot of water and pigment on your paper, if, they, if you then apply a hairdryer or a heat tool, there is a tendency for the paint and water to shift, to move across the page. So I, what I was doing was letting it dry a little bit and then just finishing off the drying process with the hairdryer, just so I could carry on working. Sorry about my head popping into view. I have got my hair pulled back, but uh, yeah, my, that was definitely my head and not just my hair then. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's always already making some really nice, interesting marks towards the bottom of the paper, the little rivulets of um, pigment. And I think even at this stage, I wasn't quite sure. I could see a ground line vaguely running across the middle of the page. So I thought maybe stands of trees either side, but I didn't know what I was going to do with the middle. The background, however, right in the middle at the back where it's blue, with the white line running vertically, that was actually partly due to the breaking down of the sizing in the paper so I thought 
instead of trying to cover that up I'll work with it and make it look like maybe a waterfall coming down with a mountain at the back something like that wasn't quite sure wasn't quite sure yet so just pulling a little bit of uh, pigment off the page there so it's a case of wetting the brush or trying to get rid of that little mark but I do um, go up to that right hand corner and put another wash of out of focus trees up there adding a little bit of water down to the bottom left there just with a little derwent spritzer And I think I was listening to a podcast or something while I was doing this. So very relaxing. Picking out that tree line now that I decided was going to be there on the left. And deciding, might as well make use of those uh, tall green marks in the middle and making those into trees as well. Just adding a little bit more pigment, just working with those three colours and letting them mix on the paper letting some of the edges blend out and keeping some of the edges a little harder and it's just nice just to sit and relax and do something like this where there's no pressure if this hadn't have worked out I would have just done another one and recorded again so not all of these spontaneous paintings work some of them are more abstract I guess and that's not really a thing that I go for abstract art. I do like that touch of realism in my paintings and this has achieved it. So just wetting the uh, area that's actually at the top of the painting. So I've turned the painting round and applying a little bit of blue. Obviously it's going to go slightly purple where it's going over that red tint and then just letting it fall to the edge of the page, which is the top of the page upside down washing it out one thing to remember when you're working with watercolors is the the more water you add to your pigment it might look nice and dark when you put it on the page but the more water the lighter it's going to dry tapping it on the table there just getting to the pigments to move around a little bit more and I was actually wiping a tissue across the top there keeping everything nice and clean yeah, the, the breaking down of sizing, it does happen over time. So it's nice to buy a lot of paper, especially if it's on special offer, because as we all know, art materials have increased in price recently, or since COVID actually, drying it off with a hairdryer. So it is nice when you see paper so on offer, I guess, to stockpile and buy lots but you've got to remember if it's not going to be used or if you've got nowhere to store it where it's not going to get damp or anything like that then it does start to break down over time this is amazing this was from a shop called Osborne's originally and I'm saying it's over 20 years old it's probably more like over 30 years old so if you can hear my doorbell that's an Amazon delivery <laughs> um so yeah, this is probably more like 30 years old, this pad. And it's been stored in various places, especially when I moved house from Leicestershire to Cheshire. So, But I do think the breakdown of the sizing is just age-related and nothing to do with um, how it's been kept. Because all of the other papers this has been kept with are fine, but they aren't as old as this. <clears throat> so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to buy a lot of paper make sure you're going to use it before the sizing breaks down you can resize paper but the thing is if a paper like this is starting to break down either just use it and um, just utilize the fact that the sizing is going um, or use it for other mediums such as uh, gouache because that doesn't show as much with it being opaque you can go over the paper a little bit more or coloured pencils or even watercolour pencils are probably work okay on paper that's uh, gone by its sell by date okay just playing around with that middle ground now I know I want trees there but I'm not quite sure what I want yet so during this process uh, the video is about half an hour 
The painting took about two and a half hours, uh, maybe just a little bit more. And what I did was when I dried um, the layers, I'd sit back and have a good look at it. Some, you know, maybe go and get a cup of coffee, come back and then try and let your imagination uh, work through the painting before putting a brush to it. Um, and this way it, it helps you to see shapes that the painters formed rather than going there and trying to force a shape in there. It's nice just to uh, let your imagination run wild and it ended up looking quite mystical. I, I really like it actually, this one. But I will do more spontaneous watercolours if it's something people are interested in. thing to remember if you want it to look uh, slightly realistic is just remember your scale. Um, things further away, utilise the cool colours in a painting. Things that you want to look like they're closer to the viewer, utilise the warm colours in a painting. And obviously size as well, especially when you come to put trees and things in, make sure... Um, you're keeping that scale of things far, further away, you know, slightly smaller, slightly less detail. Now, I could have left it like this, that's fine, but um, I just wanted to carry on playing. So I just uh, put in pigment on and taking pigment off with a damp brush and tissue as well. If you want to lift pigment, just uh, dampen the brush, pop it onto the painting let the uh, water go from your brush or the dampness go from your brush onto the painting then lift it off with a tissue and nine times out of ten it just uh, lifts that pigment as well. You can get highlights by using a knife, um, a craft knife and just scratching away the paint, the dry pigment but this paper was uh, because of the sizing issue was quite delicate to be honest and I think that would have just been too much for it to handle but it coped really well with the washes it coped really well with a certain amount of lifting as well and it didn't buckle very much and it dried completely flat again as I said it is a gummed block um, a gummed block if you don't know it's um, paper in a block form and the sheets are all glued together they're glued round the four sides and then there's a tiny um, area left where you just slide a palette knife in and just pop round the edges with a palette knife to lift the sheet off that you've just worked on so it saves stretching pa the paper So just keep sitting back and having a look and deciding, yep, I want some trees over that side as well. So it really is just a case of experimentation. So for me, um, I was starting to see trees either side, um, autumn colour foliage and sort of a, a ravine in the middle and that's what I started having in my mind as I was working that there was this ravine a crevice in the middle I do go in at the very end and unfortunately I forgot to press record but I did put a blue wash right in the centre so it looks like a tiny river coming towards the viewer and then be it goes comes towards you and then disappears to the right hand side you'll see that in the finished piece so I just lifted the colours that were already there with a damp brush and put a little wash of blue the ultramarine blue <clears throat> now the ultramarine blue um, may have granulated a little bit and that enhanced the sizing breakdown in the mountain area at the back I'm calling it the mountain area at the back because really that is what it looks like to me but I think when you do something like this spontaneous watercolor um, the initial washes you could probably do put the initial washes on and then give that to three different people and they'd all see uh, you know different things in that it's amazing it's uh oh it's such fun okay so going on with a little bit of water and I'm not using anything like a fine mist spray or anything like that because that would just put an even coat of water across the paper. What I'm using is a little um, 
spray bottle that you'd use for spraying plants and things like that and what it does it gives out um, slightly larger droplets and, and then they're not all the same size so it's very random so that when you put your paint on on top of those droplets it you're going to, going to get a very random effect and I just use the dough and sprayer there just to loosen that pigment up and make it move there's all different things you could do um, you could complete completely wet the paper and go on wet on wet to begin with or like myself um, use that little pink bottle to spray random droplets of water onto the paper that's how I started this one or you could use masking fluid and flick masking fluid onto the paper and then once that's dry then apply water and paint so you get this <laughs> the random marks when the uh, masking fluid's removed all different things like that it's um, you can use a salt technique on it the list is endless your imagination is the only thing um, anything that you can imagine you can do with uh, this but uh, just keep in mind that not every painting works out I was quite fortunate that this was the first one I did on that day and it did work out but there's no such thing as um, wasted artistic time because you're continually learning if you do a painting and you can't really do anything with it you know it goes wrong or you know you're still learning and it's uh, a never-ending learning curve that's why one of the reasons I love art so so very much obviously when you've gone so far with your washes on a spontaneous watercolor painting you can then go in with um, watercolor pencil or gouache or colored pencil or pastel if you're using a more toothy paper uh, or inks acrylic inks or normal inks you know that's just you can do um, line and wash put use this technique to get all your washes on first and then go in with a a permanent uh, line maker fine liner or even um, a water soluble fine liner on top and just just experiment okay so I'm just picking up a little bit of pigment now uh, with the smallest brush and tapping it on the edge of a palette knife just to create some random spots a little bit of texture if there's areas where you don't want to, the spatters to go then just cover them with a piece of um, tissue paper make sure the paint underneath tissue paper is dry first I should be lifting it off when you lift your tissue paper off So I have pulled a little bit of Payne's Grey out in that the well of the uh, ceramic palette there and that was by accident. Um, I meant to reach for the blue, the ultramarine blue but ended up with a little bit of Payne's Grey so I carried on using it in the painting and it did create some nice darks mixed with the other colours. So now I'm trying to visualise what do I want to see in that little ravine area. Rocks maybe or bushes, um, some sort of foliage in there. But obviously it can't be too detailed because it's such a tiny painting. And if I did a lot of detail work in that area, then it would sort of look out of place. It would draw the viewer's eye straight into that area and not anywhere else. And just deciding what to do next. Decisions, decisions. So I decided that I could see some sort of tree or something forming there, some sort of uh, foliage forming. So and carrying on that ground line as well um, along to the left a little bit more. But I can't say enough about the uh, brushes. They are they they're really they're great. I'm just sketching out a painting now, watercolor painting, and I'm going to definitely be using these brushes again because uh, yeah, they're they're wonderful. They did exactly what I wanted to do. 
carried a lot of pigment, carried a lot of water, kept a fine point and you can't ask for more than that of a brush and they've got a nice spring to them as well. So this is one thing that I did that I ended up reversing so I decided I wanted some dark fir trees going up the back there and what I end up doing is lifting them out so they're very very faint in the finished painting. So I decided I was going to use this dark purple mix that I'd mixed up using the ultramarine blue and the Pirel red light and then I decided nope don't like them so I went into them again with a damp brush once they were dry went into them with a damp brush lifted out most of the pigment and then did a dark, very dark green wash over them instead and you'll see that in the finished painting. So just nothing to be afraid of it's just a piece of paper and some paints and if you just think of it as playtime don't put any um, restrictions on yourself really. If time's an issue then this is a perfect way to work because you can get all of your initial washes on wet paper um, if you're limited for time and in, then instead of sitting and drying them you can walk away let them dry on their own do whatever you've got to do and then come back and spend another you know 15 20 minutes on it if you can put some more washes on walk away and and, and keep doing like this is something you can keep coming back to obviously you can overwork I guess something like this but there's no problem with that if you're going to overwork it at least you're learning while you're doing it and you'll know to stop um, a little bit earlier next time so there's no rules no just play time it's your time it's your fun time uh, yeah and there's no such thing as wasted art products. The only ones that are wasted are the ones you don't use. So the core watercolours, they are quite expensive, but you only need a little bit because the pigment um, is so rich that this in this uh, ceramic palette, I've had this paint in that for oh, a year maybe. And uh, yeah, still picking at it now. I'm tempted to dry it out and then move it all, but uh, I've not, not yet. So there's the finished painting. As you can see, I did some more washes up to the top right hand side and the blue in the middle, little stream coming towards the viewer. And I felt that I'd done enough. So that's how I did my spontaneous watercolour with the Fumi watercolour travel brush set they're vegan and I'll I'll link everything in the description below and they do come in a little wallet as well and that's um, vegan leather so it's made out of uh, plant material I'm assuming doesn't smell or anything like that it's got slightly feels slightly like leather but you can tell that it's not and that's um, a brush rest <laughs> that my friend Mark made for me a long long time ago Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's a short one. Everybody cheers. Um, thank you for um, tuning in and spending this time with me. I hope you give Spontaneous Watercolour a try. And if you'd like me to do some more, just drop a comment uh, below. And I'll see you all soon. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and share it with friends um, if you'd like to. That'd be great. Helps the algorithm. Anyway, I'll sign off now. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.